In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Aurora Optima fountain pen. I'll go over the specs, I'll do a writing sample, and I'll tell you what I like and don't like about this pen coming up. Blake here with Blake's Broadcast. On this channel, I review fountain pens, paper, and ink, and as always, I put links in the show notes in the description below. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel. All right, let's get on with the review. So this is the Aurora Optima fountain pen. I've had this pen for over 10 years, and it's one of my favorite fountain pens. I liked it so much, I even bought one of the original Aurora Optimas from the 1930s. And having that pen gives me even more respect for this pen because they kept a lot of the original proportions from that 1930s pen. You know, the quality of their pens back then were excellent, and they're still really, really good today. They're still made in the same place in Torino, Italy, but they've been making pens since 1919. It's over 100 years now. Anyway, let's talk about the design of the pen. It's basically a flat top pen. You know, the ends are not exactly perfectly flat. It won't stand up if I were to, you know, put it on the desk. But the design is pretty much a flat top, and that makes it a little bit shorter than a normal torpedo shaped pen, but you do get the size and the, the thickness of a full size pen. It does kind of taper down towards the ends slightly, but it's a pretty you know, square and a chunky pen. Starting with the cap, so we have a, a black plastic finial up here. It's again, like I said, it's not perfectly flat, but it is you know completely black. There's nothing on there. There's a little step about a third of the way down, and then we go down to this very kind of I would say curvaceous clip. It looks really, really nice. It's not a spring-loaded clip, but there's a lot of tension there. It's a strong clip. Underneath the clip, I can't see it, but it says metal under there, so it's made out of real metal. Wow. The material of this particular one is called Aurora Lloyd. It is a acrylic. Oh, there's some kind of technical name, cellulose acutate. It's not real celluloid. Interestingly, Namiki did a line called the Custom Impressions, which used this same material. Going down to the cap ring here, we have a very nice looking cap ring. We've got two Greek keys here filled in, in in black. In the middle, we have a coin edge. It, it's really nice. And then you can see Aurora there and Italy on the back, because of course this pen is made in Italy. We have a little chamfer at the end of the, the cap ring there. And then on the body, just kind of tapers down. We have a ring here. It is a piston filler, so this is the blind cap. And again, nothing on there. And then here on the body, like on an old Aurora pen, it says Fabrica Italiana di Penna a Sir Bratio. So I think it's a reservoir pen. I think that means a fountain pen in Italian. And then it says Aurora Italia in this little triangle thing. Let's take the cap off. This pen posts very nicely. So here we have a little metal ring, and then we have the, the ink window here, and then we have a big black plastic grip section. There are no seams on this grip section, at least none that I can see, and I really like that. There's also no seams on the body. You know, I, I believe these are turned from a, a solid rod of, of this material. The grip section, we have threading here, and then it's a bit, it's fat here, and it kind of tapers down. And then we, at the end here, it flutes out so you don't grip too far down. And this is a design that I've seen on many vintage Aurora fountain pens. It's a, a very nice, comfortable grip section. I think Aurora always does a good job of making a real writer's pen. Now, looking at the nib, this is a 14 karat gold nib, and it's either rhodium or white gold plated. Aurora makes all of their own nibs in-house. I believe they make pretty much everything that goes into this pen themselves. Very nice design. We can see 14K in the, in the middle there, and 585 just below it, and then Aurora at the very base here. These nibs are threaded, so you can take them out and, and swap them. Aurora also makes 18 karat gold nibs that fit this, as well as flexible, well, you know, what they call flexible nibs. They're softer nibs. These are really, really nice nibs. They, Aurora nibs have their own kind of personality. They have a bit of toothiness to them. 
They're really, really nice. Some of my favorite nibs. They also have an ebonite feed, which Aurora makes for the nib. From a writer's perspective, this really has everything you want. It's a nice lightweight. It's not made out of a heavy material. You have a big, luxurious grip section. It's really excellent. Now, one other thing, Aurora piston fillers have what they call a hidden reservoir system. So when you're out of ink, when you're writing and the pen runs out of ink, you twist the blind cap all the way down so it's out like this. And then you'll see that the plunger or the um, seal has come down. You can see it in the ink window. And this sort of activates a little hidden reservoir which gives you, I don't know, I would say maybe one or two pages to write with before you're really out of ink. It kind of alerts you that you're low. So in that sense, I think it's very good. In terms of cleaning, it makes it a little bit harder, I think, than cleaning a normal piston filler because there's always a little bit of water or ink that kind of gets stuck behind there. There's just a little bit more work to clean, but it is nice that it kind of gives you an alert that, oh, I'm almost out of ink. So anyway, let's do some measurements. The length capped were about 126, 127 millimeters. So because of those flat tops, it is a pretty short pen, about 122, 123, and posted. This is a great pen to use posted. About 153, I would say. Now, just as a comparison to some other pens, notice how big the grip section is on the Aurora Optima. It's super, super nice, super comfortable. The 149 is a fatter grip section, but it's much shorter. The Homo sapiens, the Visconti, also very, very short. Whereas with the Aurora, you get more options as to where you hold the pen and how you hold the pen. It's really, really nice. At the widest point, just above the threads, it's 12.2 millimeters. And then right at the edge before it kind of flutes out, 10. So let's do the weight. So 21.37 21 grams, and that is with no ink in it. So that's a, a very light, well, not very light, but it is a light pen. You know, the weight that you would expect a plastic pen to be. And then uncapped, 14 grams. So super light, super comfortable. This is a marathon writing pen. It's one of the most, if not the most comfortable pens that I own. It's awesome. Okay, so today's paper test is going to be on a... Mitsubishi bank paper notebook from my brand, The Paper Mind. For Blake's broadcast subscribers, you can get 10% off with code BB10 at thepapermind.com. Okay, let's get the writing sample going. So, this is a Aurora Optima, and this is the OBB nib, and this is Mont Blanc Burgundy. Now, no fast writing. It is a pretty sharp nib, as most of Aurora's sort of edged nibs are. So, you know, it's definitely, there's definitely some p position sensitivity there, and there's definitely a bit of toothiness. The skipping that we maybe saw just a, a little bit here and there, I think is really down to that position sensitivity and just me not holding the nib correctly in, in those spots. Um, the performance of this pen is really good. I've had this pen for probably at least 10 years now and the writing performance is excellent. You know this nib doesn't really write like any other OBB nib that I, I have. Uh, Aurora's have their own unique feel to them. And I haven't tried reverse writing with this before but let's try it. No, no, really no. You do get you know 
just from it being an oblique nib, you do get some line variation, but you can push on this nib a little bit. It's not really designed for that, but I see, look, and we got to skip there. So what are my pros and cons for the Aurora Optima fountain pen? The biggest pro for me is definitely the nib. These 14 karat gold Aurora nibs are really excellent. They have their own kind of unique personality. They are a bit toothy. They come in many different grades. You can have italic, stub, like this one, oblique double broad. They give you a lot more options than most other fountain pen companies. And they make the nibs in-house, including like the Ebonite Feed. It's an excellent nib and I think a unique writing experience using one of these nibs. So I really love the nib. I also like that the design of this pen is very comfortable. You have this big, comfortable grip section. The pen is lightweight despite being a full-size pen. They really designed this pen with the user in mind, and I think that that shows. It's really, really nice. I like that the pen is a piston filler, has a good ink capacity. Oh, I also like that the nibs are threaded. So I have multiple nibs for this pen, and I can just unscrew the nib and put a new, new one in without risking damaging anything. Now, in terms of cons, for me, definitely, you know, the price is a con. It's $600. Now, in the luxury pen space, I do think this offers maybe more value for money than some other pens. You know, the pen is made by Aurora at their factory in Torino, Italy. They make all the parts that go into this pen, as far as I know, and they've been making pens there for a hundred years. They're very independent, and I think that is worth spending extra money on, and this is such a nice pen. The other con, I would say, is I don't love the Hidden Reservoir ink system. Yes, it's nice to have a little bit left when you're nearly out of the out of ink, but I find it makes it a little bit harder to clean the pen because when the plunger goes all the way down, you know, it makes space for ink or water to, to sit behind that seal, and it just makes it a little bit harder to clean. But that's pretty much it. So, do you guys have this pen? Do you like this pen? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more fountain pen paper and ink videos, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much. And until next time.